Well, so here is what I'm up to today. Doing the brake rotors and pads in the Ranger. I've already uh, taken the wheel off. Now, I did try, wasn't sure, but I did try and see if the rotors from the parts Ranger would work on this truck, but they're a different size, so unfortunately they won't. But it was worth a shot. So all I really got to do now is just pull off this castle nut here, and pull off the nut that should be behind that, pull out the uh, backing plates, and uh, then pull the old rotor off, throw the new one on. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this cotter key. Now, you might say that these rotors don't appear to be all, in all that bad a shape, but they're warped. One of them's warped. I don't know which one it is. It might be this one. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace both of them. And I know that because at high speeds when I'm braking, the whole front end vibrates and shakes, which isn't good. So that cotter pins out. Go ahead and pull the castle nut off. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take these off in the order and the order in which they come off and lay them here on the side. The brakes and rotors are typically pretty easy to do. And here's the bearing. I'm just going to go ahead and set it aside so nothing gets into it. And I'm going to set the rotor aside as well. Now I'm going to open up the new rotor. I'm going to go ahead and re-grease these bearings here that came out of the old one, throw them back in the new one. The bearings are still good. I think the, uh, the original owner did uh, these rotors and everything before um, I bought the truck, well before. Some things still look new. So I'm going to go ahead and swap over the bearings and we'll be good to go. Okay, so you got the old bearing put back in, re-greased it. Put the retainer back on it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that on. I already lubed up the shaft, even though it was pretty well lubed up already. Now we're just gonna go with this bearing, which I've already greased. It didn't need any grease either, but I put some on it. Now the next part, go ahead and put your nut back on. There you have that. Go ahead and put your castle back on. Make sure that it's pretty well lined up. Get yourself a new cotter pin. Stick it through. And go ahead and give it a bend. There you have it. So now I just gotta put my new pads on my caliper. Put that back together and there's that pad. And once your caliper is back on, just kind of knock it back in place a little bit. And then, and then on these older Fords, I use these really annoying uh, press pins. So I just kind of like to start them a little bit. Kind of get the other one going too. And there you have it. So now I can put the wheel back on here. Don't want to forget to put your dust cover back on. There you have that. So now I just got to do the other side and... And I got both wheels back on. Everything's all put back together. I want to show you guys two things. First is, when you press your piston caliber back in, Oftentimes it makes your job a little bit easier, quite a bit easier actually. When if you if you go ahead and loosen and remove your master cylinder cap, that makes the job a lot easier when you go and do it. Now if you notice, you can kind of see that my uh, old rotors are very discolored. That's a sign that they got too hot and warped a little bit. I don't know how old these are. These were on the truck. Well, since I bought the thing pretty much, the prior owner was the original owner, probably replaced them once, but 
this one's not nearly as bad, but you can kind of see around the edges right there just some discoloration. But that's that means that your rotors got too hot and they warped. Not a good thing. So now let's go ahead and take it on a test drive and see how well it works. So now let's just see how well they work. Nice clean stop. It actually stopped quite a bit better. Take it up to a little bit faster this time, about 45 or so. Not too bad. I could feel my uh, ABS kick in there a little bit. And uh, there was a little bit of grease that I did get on the rotor, but that'll all, you know, basically be rubbed or burned off. Not too much longer. Oh yeah, I can smell pads breaking in. That's for sure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's not really that too hard to do rotors and pads. Some shops will charge you, you know, several hundred dollars to do it, and it's really such a simple job. Uh, this job only cost me um, about 80 bucks or so. The brake pads, were they're not ceramics, but they're, you know, the, uh, the first line of uh, Duralast that AutoZone has. And the rotors were $30 a piece, the brakes were $20. So, it's about $80 bucks right there. Normally I buy parts on Rock Auto, uh, but it's really only worth it if you're buying a lot of stuff at once. Of course, these parts would have been a lot cheaper on Rock Auto, but after shipping is involved and, you know, the wait time to get the actual parts, um, that's kind of what takes a little while. So, like I said, I'd rather spend 80 bucks than three or 400 bucks to do the same job. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You all stay close.